Hey guys, today we're going to do a video tutorial on how to make a chase game in Scratch. These are Scratch cards that come directly from Scratch. I'm just going to lead you through them. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a game that will work. So remember, always, always, always remember that you can pause it whenever you need to. If I go too fast, um, if you want to spend a little more time in an area. So I want you to have a completed project by the time that you finish this tutorial. So remember to pause it, do your work, and then go on with me. So let's get started. On this game, we have seven things we're going to do. We're going to make our sprite move left and right, up and down, how to chase a star. We're going to make it play a sound, add a score, level up, and then do a victory message. So the first thing we're going to do is make our sprite move left and right using the arrow keys. To do that, we have to choose a backdrop and choose a character. You do not have to choose the ones on the card. You do not have to choose ones that I do. I actually kind of want to do that same um, space theme that they are doing. So I'm going to choose a galaxy. And then I'm going to get rid of Scratch Cat. And I'm going to choose a character. This is a character that's going to be chasing all around. They have a couple different characters. You can do a character that makes sense for your backdrop, or you can just do a character that you think is fun. So I am going to do my floating dog dot. I'm going to make this dog a little smaller by changing it in the size menu right here to 75. And then now that I have my backdrop and my character, I can add my code. So I want you to pause the video, find your backdrop, and find your sprite under the backdrop library and the sprite library. Once you've found them, now we're going to add the code. The code is, it's actually the same block from the yellow menu here. So I'm going to go over to my yellow events menu. I'm going to grab out two win key press. It's the second block down. So I'm just going to grab two of them right now since I'm on the yellows. And then I need to change X by from my blue menu. So I'm going to go up to my motion blue menu. Change X by is pretty far down here. It's right here. Change X by. I'm going to grab out two and I can just link them to the event block. Now, with your right arrow, whichever one you put as your right arrow, if you look here, whenever there's a triangle, it's a menu that you can pull down. So I'm going to click on this space. If I choose my up or my right arrow right here, it's going to make it go right because I say I want to change it by 10. So that means it's going to move 10 spots to the right. But if I choose my left arrow, I want to make it go left. To make it go left on your screen, you have to put a minus sign in front of it, a negative sign, because you want it to go in the middle is 0, 0. So anything to the left of that is minus, and anything to the right of that is positive. Same thing with up and down with Y. Anything in the top half of the screen is a positive number, and anything in the bottom half of the screen, you're going to have to subtract, minus. So now I'm going to try it. I'm going to use my left and my right, and I can see that it works. So I can go on to my next card. Now I want to use up and down. It is the same, um, the same blocks that I used before. So I'm going to since I'm already on my blues, instead of doing a change X by though, I'm going to do a change Y because I want to go up and down. So I'm going to grab out two change Y bys. I'm going to move these up here. And then I'm going to go back to my yellow events menu and grab two of those win key pressed. I'm going to hook them on. Move that up. And then grab one more to hook onto my other change Y by. So now when, and if I use my menu, when my up arrow is pressed. I want to change Y by positive 10 because I want to go up. When my down arrow, let me grab my menu and select down arrow. When my down arrow key is pressed, I want to come here and it always selects the 10 and then I just want to click in front of the 10. If you accidentally erase the 10, you'll just have to type it again. I'm just going to put a minus sign here because I need to subtract 10 because I want to move down. So now I'm going to test those out going up and down. So you should have a sprite now that can move all around your screen using your arrow keys. So the next thing we need to do is chase a sprite. Add a sprite to chase. Okay. 
Let's see. I'm going to add, I'm going to grab that star as well. You guys can grab anything you want. You can chase a banana if you would like. So with our star, let me see how big it is. Yeah, that's a pretty good size. Now that I've chosen it, I need to add this code right here. It says when green flag is clicked, that's from my events. That's what triggers it. So since I'm on my events, I'm going to grab that out. And it says I forever want it. So you just constantly want it to move and you're going to have it glide blank number of seconds to, and then we're going to do a random position. So I'm going to go to my orange menu and grab out of forever to the third block down. Then I'm going to go up to my motion block and I'm going to grab, let's see, it's a two, four, six block down, glide one second to random position. Now, if you change this to something below one second, it will just do it faster going around. Um, I'll show you what it looks like right now. Right now, it's just going to glide all around. I want it to just go anywhere on the screen. And so that's why we chose random position. And I'm going to show you what happens when I change this to like a 0.5. So now it's going to go a lot faster everywhere, but it can't get as far around the screen sometimes. Um, so I think I'm just going to stick with one second right now. You can't even make it go slower if you want. Okay, so now that we have a star that moves around or a sprite, whatever your sprite is, I want it to play a sound when my character touches the star. So when my dog touches the star, I want there to be a sound. So I need to make sure that I'm clicked on my, on my sprite that is chasing. And I want to go to my sounds tab. It's right up here. You have code, costume, sounds. And you're going to choose a sound from your sound library. A lot of you will say, well, there's only one sound. But if you go down here, this is a whole sound library. And you can choose animal effects, whatever sound you want to do. Don't do loops right now because we don't want it to constantly play. We just want it to be one sound. And I want you to pause the video and find the sound that you want it to do. You can test out the sounds by clicking on the play right at the top here so you don't have to choose it you can just test them out so look through all the sounds and pick one for you as soon as you find your sound you can go back to your code tab and we're going to add this code right here so i need to go to my events menu my yellow events i'm going to push this page up a little bit so i can work i'm going to grab out a when green flag is clicked and then it looks like i need two blocks from my controls my orange controls menu so i'm going to come down to orange I'm going to grab a forever block and I'm going to grab a if then block. So my if then I can put things into it. So I'm going to grab it's right here, right under the forever. I'm going to put if then and bring it up just a little bit. Hopefully it will let me. And now I need to go to my purple or not my purple. Yeah, my purple sound block. I'm going to go down to the sound and I'm going to grab out a play sound until done. And so what you do, you're going to put it right in the middle here. It fits perfectly. My last block is from my sensing blue. So I'm going to say forever look for if my sprite, if dot is touching the star. So I need to grab a touching right up here. It's the very first one. If it's touching and see how it goes white when I scroll over it. If it's not white, if you're over here, it's not going to drop in. So you wait for it to go white and it will drop in. It will get bigger just for you. And then you can use your menu. And I'll say if it's touching the star, then play the sound when it's done. So now I need to test that out. So I'm going to click on my green flag. I'm going to move all around and see if that works. Okay, so I hit my green star. I'm going to use my arrow keys, try to chase this star around. Or I hit my green flag, not my green star. And you might not be able to hear it, but mine is boinging away. So that works now. So we're going to go on to our next card, which is add a score. So we want to make this kind of into a game. So we need to add a score. So we're going to go to, it says, choose your variables and then click make a variable button so i'm going to go to my variables my dark orange and then at the very top it says make a variable i need to click on that i'm going to name it score s c o r e i'm going to click ok 
And now I want my score is visible right here because I have this check marked. If this wasn't check marked, it would just go away. So you need to make sure it's check marked. And now I want to add some to my code here. So this is code we've already made right here for our sprite that's chasing. I want to grab out a set score and put it right under the green flag, squeeze it in there. And then I want to add out a change right in the if then. So if I'm touching it, so first I want to say I want to set my score to zero when the green flag hits. But then if it's touching the star, I want it to change the score by one. I want it to add a point every time I touch the star. So let me check that out by running my green flag. Right now it's at zero. Oh, I just missed it. <laughs> I just got six points off that. So it's working. Okay, so now why don't you pause it, do your code, and try and make sure that your score works as well. Reset it to zero. Okay, so now we want to make a second level. Now that we have a working game, let's make a second level. So we are going to choose a second backdrop because our second level goes to a different place. You can choose kind of a backdrop that's in the same um, theme, or you can go somewhere totally different, like mine might end up in the desert. So now that I've added that, I'm going to go back, make sure that my chasing sprite is selected. I'm going to add more code here. So this is another line of code. It's not the same code that we've been doing before. And so I need to go to my yellow events menu, grab out another when green flag is clicked. And then now that I have two different backdrops, I need to do a reset code and make sure that it always starts on the galaxy, the one that is my level one. And then I also need to grab out another switch backdrop. My screen is a little crowded here. And then I need to go into my orange control menu. I need to grab a wait until, it's almost all the way at the bottom here. I'm gonna say wait until and now I need to add a green sensing block that has an equal sign in here. So I go to my green operators. I'm going to find the one with the equals. It's right down here. And remember, oops, make sure it has that white. I'm going to drop it. And now I'm going to change this to 10. When my score equals 10, so I also have to put in a score for my variables. Remember, we made that one. I'm going to grab out the score. I'm going to squeeze it into that circle. I'll say wait until the score equals 10 and now I can hook this on and then switch the backdrop to the desert. And so that is complete. So then I go to when backdrop switches to the desert. I want to play a sound when until done. So now because you want to kind of celebrate that you are on to the next event on to the next level. So I'm going to say when the backdrop switches, it's on my yellow events menu. When it switches, now I go up to my sounds, play the sound until done. I need to go back and choose a different sound. I don't want the same sound as when I get points. So you're going to grab out all this. You're going to change it to when it switches to your second backdrop. And now I'm going to go back to my sounds tab and I'm going to find a different sound that um, there is a sound called win. If you just put in W-I-N up at the top, you can do that sound. Um, I'm going to grab it just like they did. You can choose any sound you want. So now it still says Boeing and I have to do my drop down menu and change it to win. So now when my I get up to 10, it should switch. I'm going to test that out. You can pause this or you can, while I'm playing the game, you can choose out, do your own code. Okay, good job. My sound went and my backdrop switched. So now I can go on. The last thing I'm going to do is do a victory message. So when I go to a next level, I kind of want it to say, hey, you've leveled up or good job, whatever you want to say. So what you need to do is paint. You need to make a sprite that is a message. So I'm going to come here to my sprite menu. Instead of going into my sprite library, I'm going to go and I want to paint my own. So you can use the text tool over here to type. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to type and I'm going to do it in capital letters level up. Oh, I was going to do it in capital letters. Let me go back and do it in capitals. 
level up with an exclamation mark. You can then, I'm going to put this right in the middle. I'm going to lock it into the middle. And then you can actually come in here and you can change the font if you want. Like they have a pixelated font and I can make it bigger by coming to the corner and pulling on it. And I don't think that the purple really shows up very well for me. So I'm going to change it to black, I think. Let's come here and pull my brightness all the way down and see what that looks like. Level up. And I'm going to have it come down. I'm going to move it down here because it's kind of hard to see against the sky. So now it's going to say level up. So now that I've made my sprite, I can go now to the coding of that sprite. You see it says level up. I've chosen level up down here. And I'm going to add this code right here. Remember, I've said it a lot, but remember to pause this video so that you can stay caught up with me. Make your sprite, then come and do your code. Don't watch it and then try to remember everything. Pause it as you go. So I'm going to grab out a when green flag is clicked. And I'm going to grab out a wind backdrop switches because you'll notice you need two yellow. So you might as well grab both since you're there right now. Then I need to go to my purple looks and I need to grab out two hides and one show. They're at the bottom. I'm going to grab out two hides. I'm going to hook that one to the green flag and then I'm going to put a show. And now I need a wait. My last one is the orange control. I need to... I want it to show itself for about two seconds and then hide itself again. So now I'm going to play my game. I'm going to make it big and I'm going to see if my game works. It should reset when I do the green flag. This sprite should go away and I should switch back to the other backdrop. Looks like that works. And if I just sit here, I don't really have to do a whole lot with my game. You might want to make it harder by making your sprite bigger, smaller. Good job, but I don't see my level up. So I'm going to come back here. Oh, because I didn't switch this. So you're going to go back and you're going to debug and make sure, okay, when the backdrop switches a desert, then it's going to show. So I got to play it again. So remember, as you're going around, you're going to find different things that you might've forgotten to do, things you want to change. That's called debugging is making your project uh, work how you want it to work. Oh, I'm almost there. Okay, now it shows and my backdrop has switched. I have a working game. I hope you do too, and I hope you had fun.